Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, Hunting for Silver Linings. This is Wednesday, April 7th, and uh, Hunting for Silver Linings is a part of uh, Startup Grind Grand Rapids here in the Great Lakes region of the, uh, the Midwest, um, West Michigan. Uh, joined today, uh, we have James Chapman. He is the founder and CEO of Plain Sight. Um, uh, no longer in Michigan, is that right? Yeah, right now I'm in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Atlanta. <laughs> Very good. So um, really interested in what you're building, but um, also interested in uh, your story uh, yeah. and, and how, you, uh, how you came up. So can you, can you give us a little background on, uh, on you and maybe start with, uh, you know, some, some, how did you get inspired to be this entrepreneur? Like, was it, is it something that's in your blood or mm. how, how, would it, how did that even become an option for you? Yeah, so I, I grew up, man, um, about an hour and a half away from Atlanta, um, which is which is why it's nice to uh, be able to have this remote flexibility. Uh, that's one of the perks of, of COVID. I mean, COVID has brought a lot of um, terrible things uh, along with it, but but being able to have that flexibility to be close to home is is a, is a nice one. Um, so when I was young. I used to sell my toys when I was done playing with them. Uh, so that was a, a, a probably a, a form of entrepreneurship, right? Way to cut, good way to cut the overhead costs. Uh, just, just, just sell those. Um, and my family, you know, they all were kind of dibbling and dabbling into entrepreneurship, even though they weren't really calling it entrepreneurship, right? So like my cousins cut hair and my, one of my cousins did hair and my, my, my auntie, she was a candy lady. So she sold candy out of her house and things of that nature. And so I think I've always been around hustle and around like different little forms of, of entrepreneurship, even if it was out of necessity. Uh, and so I think that that's what's actually in my blood, this, this ability to just like figure out a way to be able to make ends meet um, no matter what, right? Using your God-given abilities and, and your know-how to be able to to create opportunities for yourself, and I, I think that that's always been in my in my blood from from a very young age, and, and some of the things that I, that I've witnessed. And I think just over time, it, it's manifested itself into different forms of uh, more legitimate, more legitimized entrepreneurship. Um, cool. So. Uh, and then, uh, as far as like school, did you did you specifically get some training and education in entrepreneurship and uh, small business management stuff like that? Anything or? like that? No, not not at all, man. When I um, when I graduated high school and then went off to college, um, I got a basketball scholarship, so I was hooping. Um, and then I ended up going to school for marketing and communications. Uh, not really thinking about entrepreneurship, but, but while I was in college, I would resell shoes. This was before like, you know, StockX and Goat and all these, you know, these platforms and that kind of stuff out there for, for resale. But, um, you know, I was just doing it to take girls to the movie, just, you know, being able to have some, some side, side money there. Um, and, you know, when I was in college, I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to get into once I graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, but communications and marketing was interesting to me. And so that's what I, that's what I studied. And actually after college, I ended up getting into workforce development when you know, quit playing basketball and, and got into workforce and worked in workforce for a number of years and, um, you know, kind of climbed the, uh, the ladder there pretty quickly within the organization that I was a part of and decided to start a mobile oil change business out of all things. So like I hated going to get my oil change and I was ready to, you know, you know, to do something else. And I was like, I know what I'll do. I'll start an oil change business. And so like that's that's that that's kind of that was kind of my first, you know, le legit um, you know, startup uh, uh that, that I would say that I that I actually got into in, in, as an adult. Um, you know, since, since you are somewhat of a seasoned um, you know, entrepreneur, a lot of different experience. So you just, I just learned about the mobile oil change. I love that. I have a buddy that has this thing called Lot Wash. And, you know, he's like setting up in uh, um, different uh, uh, like parking lots, just washing cars. Yeah, yeah. Just to, and it's for the same reason. Like, I'm just tired of going to the car wash, Corey. That's right. I'm just tired right. of going to the car wash. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. That, right. People, people <laughs> will pay for convenience. And what, what ended up being kind of sticky for us is um, people who had a fleet of vehicles. Yeah. So like you got this fleet of vehicles instead of uh, having your 
um, your fleet manager drive the cars one by one to go get the car service. We would come on, on property for them and, and knock the fleet out for them. And they bill us, we bill them and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. yeah, this guy uh, started doing some fleets and then he ended up doing uh, like fleets of small jets and stuff. Oh man, so, that's crazy. Like uh, never, and he didn't even think that that was going to be a thing, but all of yeah. a sudden some phone call comes and it's like, yeah, we got some jets. <laughs> we want you okay. to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So, you never really know, but uh, you answer the call and you say yes, right? That's right. So, that's, like, right. That's, that's entrepreneurship. Yeah, you don't turn down those type of opportunities at all. Yeah, but uh, digging through a little bit of your history, it seems like you also yeah. have a, a strong line of being a community builder and connector. Yeah. Um, and uh, and 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 ease, maybe, does that always come easily and naturally to you, uh, this idea of connecting with folks and connecting the, the dots? Yeah, and I think that that definitely come, comes very naturally. I think I, I've got like a, I've got I've got aspirations to just help people, man. To be honest, like I, I want I want to if I'm in your life in any way, I, I I want your life to be improved because I'm in your life. Yeah, I think that that's just naturally how I, how I operate. And so what what ended up happening is you know we we speak about the community building and the connectivity piece, and and now we're starting to flirt with with what what I'm into now. I started to figure out that I actually liked helping entrepreneurs more than I like selling oil changes. And so, and so like, because the oil change business started to, you know, pick up a little bit, budding entrepreneurs would reach out and ask for help with how to get a business plan started or help with how to get something funded or whatever the case may be. And they were all working a nine to five job. So I, I opened up a co-working space between the hours of 6 p.m. and midnight so that you know, side hustlers could come, collaborate, share ideas, meet up, all of those types of things, get out of the house, you know, from the distractions and coffee shops close at six. And so that's when I really started to dig deep into the community building and, and the connecting people uh, within shared spaces and, and things of that nature. And and you know, if I if I wouldn't have started the oil change business, maybe I wouldn't have saw that that was such a need um, to be able to start doing doing those types of things. So. Right. And, uh, and that's, uh, that was called workaholics. That was workaholics. Yep. That was workaholics. Yep. So started, started workaholics for people to be able to come collaborate, share, share their ideas, uh, and be able to grow. And that was fairly early in the whole, uh, co-working, like, uh, it was, it was that pre WeWork. <laughs> oh yeah. I think that was pre WeWork, man. I don't even, I don't even know if co-working had, had blew up in the, in the <laughs> right. way that, that it is now. Um, uh, you know, I, I, you know, it wasn't, I don't even think we were calling it co-working when, when, right. when we were doing that. We were probably just calling it meetup space or, you know, right. whatever. But, uh, but, but yeah, that was, that was definitely pre, um, pre we work and, and co-working was, was probably just starting to, to get going and, and starting to gain some attention. Uh, so I'm sure that you still are in touch with a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, people that you're uh, mentoring. Um, because we're just a big family and flock of uh, entrepreneurs, what what are some of the um, what are some of the questions or what are some of the advice that you're giving right now for entrepreneurs and, uh, and, and while they're building their business and pivoting or I don't know maybe seeing opportunity as we're emerging from pandemic planet? Yeah, I mean everybody's trying to navigate through this space. So so that you know that's t- that's top right. It's like, am I planning for today? Or am I planning for what the world's going to look like six months from now? Both, like, like all of, all of the, the the timing questions are, are are very important right now, especially if you're doing brick and mortar business. You know, oh, oh, oh my god, like, um, it, it, there's been so many issues that that people who are dealing with brick and mortar ha- have had to face, and and you know, my heart really goes goes out to those guys with things opening and closing so much, depending upon where you live. So so you know that that's been a big one. But I would say on a more personal front, just outside, you know, pandemic aside, I think a lot of people are trying to figure out how to leverage technology. You know, people are trying to say, you know, maybe I'm not into tech, uh, but I but I'm looking to get into tech, or I've got a new tech idea. I realize that you know, technology is the wave. I think the pandemic has taught people that, right? We've seen in, you know emerging platforms like uh, Clubhouse come on the scene and get these crazy valuations, and we've seen you know uh, platforms like Amazon you know grow from you know, really wealthy to what the hell wealthy. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. And so like, like, yeah, that's you know, just obnoxious uh, wealth traffic transfer. Yeah. Right yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so, like, so I, I, I think I'm, I'm asking, uh, answering a lot of questions these days about, you know, emerging technology and people trying to leverage technology and get into the space. And, 
and, and then what that looks like for, for the pack four. So a lot, a lot of questions around that. So then uh, what was the, what was the transition or what was the inspiration to then move from the workaholics and uh, get into uh, creating what you're doing now? And maybe you could uh, end yeah. with uh, the, the little uh, pitch on what it is that you're, that you've building. Yeah. I, I wanted to replace myself, right? The number one question people were asking me is, can you help me get connected to somebody that comes to the space? You know, who's in the space right now and all of this type of stuff. And so I just realized that hyper-local connections could be done best probably through technology um, and, and, and started to think about how could I leverage technology to improve, you know, what I wanted to do, which was connect people and allow people to grow their networks and allow people to, um, to leverage human capital, right? And so, um, you know, what, what ended up happening was I, I couldn't stop thinking about the idea. People were always asking me about it. Then I just started thinking about the solution of how would I, how would I go about doing it? And my first step was I started a web app. Um, I, I used this company out in LA to build me an MVP of a web app. And I started testing that web app with different co-working spaces. Um, and so I would go to the co-working space and I would say, listen, I'll buy your co-working members lunch if they'll test out my platform, right? And give me some feedback on it. Uh, and I use that feedback to start pitching a few angels and then it just kind of grew and grew. And then we were able to secure some funding to put together a round for Plain Sight, a mobile platform for connecting like-minded people in shared spaces. Uh, you know, pre-COVID those shared spaces have looked like networking events, coffee shops, co-working spaces, et cetera. Uh, but now with, with COVID, uh, we started to also list virtual spaces for communities like General Assembly or the Urban League or whatever the case may be for those communities to make meaningful connections in real time. And so uh, we're, we're now that hybrid of virtual and in-person. And I think the world is gonna be a hybrid of virtual and in-person for the next 18 to 24 months. And so uh, hopefully we're, we're, we're well positioned to be able to provide some real real value to folks. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, what, was, uh, what's the, what was the early stages of, um, fundraising like uh, april is a uh, funding month for startup grind and so it's it's something that's obviously on a, on a lot of entrepreneurs minds yeah anyway yeah. um what was that like as someone who's uh, that natural connector and maybe had a little bit of social capital going into this right um but what was that experience like and maybe uh maybe some people can uh, learn something you, you i really had to lean in on my social capital to be honest with you when when somebody's betting on a company so early that that hasn't made any money and you're, it's, it's a brand new concept and all of this type of stuff people are betting on you um you know they're betting on the jockey and not the horse as as dan gilbert would, would say who is one of our investors um and so you know i i think that that's the other reason why it's really important to make sure that you have a strong network or try to build that network up. And that's the reason why we built one of the reasons we built Plain Sight. And so that people could build up their network and then leverage their network to create opportunities for themselves. And so I, I really, really think that honestly, while people probably saw the vision of what I wanted to do with Plain Sight early on, they were really betting on me and betting on like, he's an executor and he can get things done. He's got a track record of being able to, you know, get accomplish some things. Um, and, and so I, I would say you got to really lean into those threads and, and the networking and your social capital when you're really, really early, especially. Um, and then allow that to turn into leveraging opportunities and growth and traction, things of that nature, but really starts with the network. Awesome. I, I'm, I'm glad you ended up on, uh, on traction there. So do you have uh, like one or two, uh, use cases that um, whether they were a surprise or not that, that you love to talk about like things that because if you're, if you're in the business of building connections like you, I'm sure you've got some really great stories of, of people just like benefiting from from what you're building. Absolutely. One would be myself. I've benefited. I hired an engineer <laughs> off of Plain Sight. Uh, you know, with, uh, we, we had one dev and we we're looking to hire another dev. We had launched a business or whatever and we had just announced and uh, there were a few software developers that were on the platform and I, I searched software developers for React Native uh, with tag React Native and uh, just, you know, DM'd a, a few folks and met this guy who I, I really like found a liking to and ended up hiring him. Um, and so that would be my, my own story. Um, but then uh, outside of that, man, there's been so many people who said, you know, I've, I've met talent for my startup. I've met people who've been able to give me advice on something that I'm building. Uh, I've been able to meet a new client on, on Plain Side. And so 
you know, th those are the stories that, that we're really excited about. Right now we have 7,500 active members on the platform, which is great. Uh, we got featured as Apple App of the Day here recently. So uh, th there's a lot that, that we're really thankful for and proud of. And, and we think that right now, as we start to get back into, um, back into action with events, we're gonna see more and more people who are just like, like make what I like to call uncommon collisions. They're, they're, they're having these uncommon collisions and they're turning that in, into meaningful connections. So uh, we, we, we've got a number of them, but, but hopefully we continue to have more. Sure. And so who, who, who can, uh, who, who's downloading the app? Do they have to, are they, are they, are they customers of these uh, co-working spaces? Uh, is it, can I just be out, out here in San Diego by myself? Can I download it? And do I get value? Like you what's sure going can. on? Yeah, you, you, can, you can download the app right now. One of the things that, that um, makes Plainsight unique is that you can make a connection in one shared space, an event, a co-working space, or whatever. You can follow that person, and you can continue to stay connected with them on an ongoing basis. If you open up the app right now where you are and you click the Near Me button at the top right corner, you'll be able to see an active list of anybody who's near you in real time that's in the Plainsight community that you may want to connect with, follow them, message them. Uh, and one of the things that we're about to roll out from a virtual standpoint are, are daily leads. Um, so we're going to now start sending you daily leads from people who are in the community that have the types of things that you're looking for based on your profile. And so, you know, we, we want to now start to really lean into, all right, uh, virtual isn't going away, even though we do in person really, really well. And so how can we still make sure that even our folks who aren't getting out into events or or in co-working spaces in real time and things of that nature can still make some really meaningful connections and meet new people. So those, those are some of the ways. Very cool. Uh, and uh, um, where, what, uh, what, what are the stages of, uh, of building are you in right now? Like what's, what are, what are the next milestones mm. you're really looking forward to? Um, mm. You obviously don't have to, you know, disclose anything that, uh, that you can't, but. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah no, we're always no, excited it's, it's, about it's, some. It's, yeah, it's it, it's all good. I, I think the um, I think the daily leads is just the baseline for us to start really leaning into curation. I, I think long term we want to be the Spotify of networking. You know, Spotify always just gets that song right that you want to listen to. We want to always, you know, get it right or close to right with the type of people you want to connect with, the type of places that you want to go, uh, the type of content, because you can make posts on play site that you want to see. And so curate without giving away too much information. Curation is definitely, uh, uh, we're really linking it into that within the, on our product roadmap ahead. Uh, and how can we really start to allow people to make new meaningful connections wherever they wherever they go and learn about them and, and help them uh, with, with growing their network in real time. Okay, cool. Um, so how does how does Plainsight make money? Yeah, so we generate our revenue from the spaces. Uh, so okay. we try to, we wanna keep it free for individuals um, to be able to, to join, join the community. But if you wanna uh, list your space on our platform, we charge you a subscription for being listed on the platform. And what that ends up looking like is uh, we don't charge the small coffee shop the same price that we would charge like the Detroit Pistons if they want to list their arena on there for a subset group of their fans or something like that to be able to connect, right? And so if you are only allowing a small number of people, you would pay one price. And if you're allowing a large number of people or you like a big event or something like that, then we, we would charge another price. So that, that's how we generate our revenue. And then are you, uh, are you currently, uh, like what, what's the geography as far as uh, spaces? Uh, is, is it US? Is it North America? Is it global? What, what's, your, what's your strategy on? Where are you yeah, now? North, where are you North, going? North, North America. I mean, one hundred percent of our spaces right now are in the U.S., but we are starting to have some conversations with folks in, in Toronto and some other cities up up in Canada. Uh, and you know, I would love for to see Plain Sight in another country uh, by by twenty twenty two for sure. Like, I, I would really love. I think Europe will, will be uh, probably the country that we really want to want to look at it and start to. Uh, starts to lean into um, and there's a couple places you know in particular that um, that we've got our, our sites on London things of that nature but um, you know I, right right now we're, we're in the U.S. and we've got about 150 spaces listed on the platform across the U.S. Yeah it's, it's fairly early to tell what's uh, really going to happen with uh, with co-working and just just uh, remote you know uh, hybrid days in and out of the office and stuff like that what, what what's going to happen around the planet but um as a community we see globally you know a huge shift um and uh 
So it seems like this is the perfect time for, for, right for time. something like what you're building. Right and, time. I, I think that <laughs> I, I think that again, we're gonna be in this 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 hybrid of virtual and in person for the next 18 to 24 months. And I think Plainsight can really be a leader in this space as people are looking for solutions to to, to do that. Uh, we're we're young, but we're scrappy. We're we're just now raising a seed round of funding. And so I, I see good things ahead for us as people start to more and more see our vision, where we're, where we're trying to go with this. Uh, and I think we're going to be able to make some really special things happen. So, you know, we're thankful for the timing. You know, never waste, waste a pandemic. I, I never waste a crisis, I think is the right, saying yeah. <laughs> uh, that, 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 people, that people have. And uh, as, as much heartache and pain that, that this thing has brought us, it's, it's now starting to, to, to show some benefits as, as well. So, you know, we'll take, the, we'll take the good with the bad. Sure. Um, so what, uh, what can um, Startup Grind and the, the global network of chapter directors and our community, like, who are, who are you looking to meet? What, uh, you know, what, what can we do for you? Absolutely. People, people who want to connect their community that want to list spaces on playing site, whether that's virtual and in person, definitely hit us up, go, go on our site, uh, list, list the space, contact me directly. Um, I'll walk you through a demo or, or walk you through the benefits of listing, listing the space. Uh, one of the real benefits that, that you know, spaces really like they get listed are the data and analytics that come with it, being able to see the skills, interests, professions of people who are visiting your space and start to tailor some of your offers to those people. Um, so, so I would say one, that, and then two, we're raising right now. So we're in the middle of a fundraise. We've got some commitments for our round and um, anybody who's looking to, to invest in, in platforms like, like ours that are social, uh, we think that we're the future of networking. Um, and so I, I would say anybody who uh, wants to invest in that space, we would love to have a conversation with them. Sweet, great. Um, do you have any uh, any final uh, thoughts for the entrepreneurs and in, in, in the virtual crowd? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I would say you know keep showing up. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what tomorrow is going to look like with this world, and no nobody really does. Uh, but you really just got to keep showing up for the fight. Um, keep keep your ear to the ground and, and, and try to keep listening to, to what's going on on out there, uh, looking for the opportunities and the threads to pull on. And the ones that that just keep showing up once we get to on the on a better side of all of this stuff um, are, are going to be, I think, uh, the ones that have a lot of longevity in this. So I know it's hard right now. Um, I, I know a lot of things are unseen or, or maybe it's good for you. Maybe you've been able to even benefit for, for whatever reason for, uh, for from this stuff. And, and if that's the case, you know, lean, lean in on that, but also uh, stay aware of, of, of what's of things that are, that are coming ahead. But that would be my advice. Keep showing up. Awesome. Uh, and uh, uh, last uh, last thing is uh, you mentioned people should be uh, reaching out uh, for, a, for a demo or to check things yeah. out. How do they how do they find you? Yeah, they can hit me up, James, at plainsighthq.com, or they can go to plainsight.app. Um, and if you want to search Plainsight in the App Store, we're the first thing that comes up. So any of those ways, uh, you can get in touch with me. Awesome. Great. Uh, well, I, I'm really grateful for the for the time and uh, the generosity uh, of, of your time and spending with us, uh, letting us uh, learn about what you're doing, what you're building, um, and especially some tips on, on the fundraising for... Uh, for funding month. So thank you so much, James. Looking forward to connecting again. Absolutely, man. I enjoyed the conversation. I appreciate the time and, uh, and hopefully we can, we can do it again soon. Yeah. Maybe in person. <laughs> I love that.